on Sailing Catalpa. We arrive at Numbrella, meet up with some friends, learn about the locals and how some make a living here on Roti Island. Tuesdays at Numbrella is market day, so we're all up early to go to the markets. But first, we went over to Red Dragonfly to say goodbye, as our friends were leaving today. It was so nice hanging out with you guys, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. On our tender ride in at low tide, Mum spotted some interesting things amongst the seaweed, a seahorse trying to blend in, and this cool little fish. Good spotting, Mum. If you want chicken here on Rote, you have to buy it alive. going to the markets in Umbrella. We got some bananas and some corn. And the kids got some kind of donut thing. We got avocados. Because we've got to learn our um, Indonesian money better. So you say burupa, which is how much? <laughs> no, I don't know what they're saying. So whatever money we handed them, they pretty much just said that was it. So I think that we got had. We also got some temp, tempeh. And um, that was it. So it was a fun morning at the markets. Hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so our mission now is to learn how to say all the money, so like 10,000, 20,000. So we know what they're saying because we feel like whatever we gave them, they just took it and we're like, ha ha ha. <laughs> right, Lee's back in the engine bay and uh, we're at Numbrella. We've been here a week. We've had a really nice time. Um, we've started the engine every day just to make sure it's all going um, and it is, but it had a little bit of a blur blur this morning, so. Um, Lee's just seeing if we can get a part number or something off the starter motor to see if we can order one. Bloody starter motors. Found a little uh, identification plate. It's been painted over which probably, probably indicates that it's been rebuilt and just sprayed up again. So I would say if that's the case it's probably due for a new one. And possibly if we could get that one rebuilt as a spare it would be awesome. So I'm going to have to scratch around here and see if I can establish what part number it is and that would make life easy because I don't know how many teeth it has and there's like 10, 12, 11, whatever, however many teeth they have. And I don't know what our one is, so this number would obviously help us out there. Uh, the guy off this boat behind us um, was driving around in a boat and uh, he came over and said he's lost his anchor so um, I offered to have a look because we've got scuba gear, scuba gear so um, Taj and I are going to go down and see if we can find his anchor he's on a mooring buoy so his anchor came untied so um, we'll go see if we can find it just getting ready to go down and look for a anchor that someone lost and we offered to go look for it. With instructions from Lee on how to read my compass and what direction to head, we descended down. Taj, don't worry buddy, mum's got this. Oh look, a Nemo! <music> 
So after getting distracted looking at the fishes, Taj decided I wasn't the best with instructions. This was a job best for dad. So we headed to the surface. Lee got kitted up in his dive gear and down we went with a capable person to read the compass. Oh, honey, look, it's Nemo. Sweetheart, stay with me, come on. It only took about 15 minutes and Lee found it. Yeah, I know, he's good at everything. Up we went and tied it onto a boy. Dave was stoked. So we're leaving an umbrella this morning and we're just heading over to Doha Island, which is only five nautical miles away. Um, we're gonna, there's a dive site there and potential surf. So we're gonna go over and check that out. Doha's Island is about five nautical miles away from Numbrella. It's a small unhabited island with just fishing shacks. Good snorkeling and a nice little surf break. I felt so happy today. I wish I could wake up and feel like this every day. One time she wrote it in a letter with one thing to say. All of my bridges were burning in the wake of my pain The sky draws in, the tide turns, I can feel the wind change mm -mm -mm. And it'll be better now, just like you, I will have to act brave And through the dark clouds you will see Tears will dry and the sun will shine Trust me, instead of holding on to grief You could place your hands into the sand And feel the beat that comes to hand The beat that comes to The surf here was better closer to the lower tide, so on high tide we would snorkel and have a spear. I wanna find a place that exists with no memories. Mm -mm -mm. So what to know you is a place. Then the, when the tide dropped, we were back in the surf. To turn my back upon the sadness that's enveloped me. Rising sun is a sign of good things to come, I believe. Oh, I believe. The wind changed, and after a few really nice days here, we pulled the anchor and headed back to Numbrella. Trust me, instead of holding on to grief, you could bless your. So, tonight we're having sushi, everyone's making their own sushi rolls. And we've got Wahoo! So we've got um, this one, it's just lime juice and soy. And this one is lime juice and soy but cooked. And that one's lime and pepper. We've got avocados, our last bit of lettuce, mayonnaise, oh, I rice in my water. seaweed, and uh, we're good to go. Everyone's a bit excited. We had some really nice guys come over and gave us a bit of a chunk of wahoo last night, so um, we're a bit, ex bit stoked about that. Wahoo's delicious. And we're back in Numbrella. Can you please get me a knife? Oh, he's having a red. You get me a glass one? of red. We've got three bottles of red from Australia. And now we have two. And they're running out. <laughs> and back out at Tea Lands where we had fun waves the next few days. Today we had a bit of a shuffle of the boat. Uh, it came time for the kids to 
need their own space. So they've been sharing a room, they've been sharing the front cabin for the last three years. And uh, Bella's decided to move out. So Bella, today we have made this little berth into Bella's room. So she's got all her things in here and she's got her own space. So, very nice. How does it feel to have your own room? Good. Good? So she's got a curtain, she can close everybody off if she wants to. And um, Taj has his own, this cabin's his own, which he's a little bit stoked about because it is the biggest cabin, but it's getting used for storage as well. So, oh. so our um, freezer wasn't freezing properly and Lee had a suspicion of why, but he just uh, pulled it out to have a look. You can see there's a little fan behind here which cools the compressor unit down. I've just opened it up to have a little look and the thing is just chock-a-block full of dust. So it's clogged. I'm going to clean all this out and then I'm going to use my little, my little uh, invention that I hooked up to my compressor or to our scuba tanks and I'll blow all the dust out and clean it all out and hopefully it was just starting to overheat and not get cool and uh, not cool everything down. Yeah, so that was stuff so up much. The, the top of the freezer wasn't um, freezing, it was all warm. So, unfortunately, I think we've lost a little bit of meat and a, a bit of uh, one cray tail. <gasps> meat? What? Yeah. After Lee cleaning it all out, our freezer now runs perfectly. So, Lee's back in the engine bay. We, uh, we have troubles again with our uh, starter motor, what well, we think is the starter motor. And we're in Roti Island in Indonesia, um, so we're not sure how we could get a new starter motor here. So Lee just has the last two hours trying to modify our spanner. Fingers trying to shave down a bit of the spanner and just trying to get the starter motor out. So close, yeah, so far away. Hot. So hot. Oh, God. <laughs> is that it? That is it. Are you kidding? All of that effort for that thing and just came out so easy. Oh, so that is the one there. The troublesome one that's under there that I've had to get right under here to get to. Well, you just spent the last two hours fiddling with the nut and he finally got it off. Um, we thought we'd have to lift the engine up to get the starter motor off, which would have been a nightmare. But he got it off. Yeah, it's got a permanent indent in it. Oh, sweetheart. So that... There's the wretched little bastard there. I know it's going to be hard work getting a new one, but I feel as though that was the hard job. Yeah. So... Oh, look, I can probably pull this apart and have a play with the brushes and whatnot, and I could make a... Temporary. You know, very temporary. The uh, sense of relief that I feel I'm feeling from you right now is amazing. Oh, uh, I'm going to bed. That was a really good job. All, oh, those, all those times we spent trying to get that nut off. We spent hours trying to get that nut I off. I usually curse if I drop something down in the well. I dropped the nut off and went yeah. down in the well, but hey. The grinny out on his face, it's stoked. Because <laughs> I dropped the nut. You wouldn't believe it, like, there's actually studs that go in here, and then the nuts go over the studs, and it's only half a dozen turns and they come off, and the one that I couldn't reach made me wind the stud halfway out, so it just made it extra hard. But anyway, it's out. So I just thought I'd have a little look inside the starter motor. And the corrosion, it's obviously had water in there. It is so corroded. Um, you can see the plate here. 
it's uh, the backing cover is just full of corrosion. So we're in a bit of a pickle because we've got to get out of where we are really quick. We're late in the season and um, we need to get this going as quick as we can. So you can see the armature is really dirty. All the brushes aren't even moving, they're all like seized up and that's what gives the contact with the armature there. So I don't even know if I can really clean that up. Um, I think our best bet's probably going to jump on the fast boat over to Kupang, find either an auto electrician or marine or it's not a rocket science job. They'll just replace this here or replace the brushes and tidy it all up, put that on the lathe, clean that up. That's where we get our connection from. Um, just a matter of yeah, getting over to Kupang, finding someone to do that. You can see the amount of corrosion in here, it's ridiculous. Mm. So even though Lee says he can't do it, he's attempting to anyway. Oh look, I just we're in an area where we don't want to be. So if we can just tidy this up and we can get up to Flores or Timor out of the cyclone belt and um, find a safe anchorage, I can jump off and go and get a new one. I'll just have to get this going so it lasts us a little bit. These brushes here, they're not even moving where they should be sliding nicely inside their housing. So I don't even know if this is going to be... Ideally I can replace this part here which holds all the brushes. It's just trying to get something here, that's all. Um, yeah, I'll clean up this, get that shiny, try and get these brushes moving and put it back together and it should be right for a little bit. So I've managed to just get one out. These are all C's, so they're the brushes which sit on the armature which give the current. So they've obviously seized and then just once they've stopped, they've worn down, they've no longer been able to push themselves onto the armature. So I think for a quick fix, if I can just get them all sliding, cleaned out and um, moving, should give us enough starts to get out of the cyclone area and get somewhere where we can pop a new one in. So this is just a temporary quick fix, but I've just given all this a wire brush and cleaned these brushes up a little bit. So these were seized, and so there was limited starts that was happening. Now I've got them moving. So it's quite a fair bit on there actually, but yeah, the whole thing is, it's no good. But um, the only dilemma in getting this back together, I've got two broken springs. i got one there that's broken and that's what a spring should look like and that keeps pressure on these bushes that keeps the bushes or the brushes on the um, armature so let's see how we go we're nearly there to at least get us out of trouble it looks a little bit different to when we first opened it it's, it's not a fix it's just a get us out of trouble so I've cleaned up here, you can see all the brushes now, I just actually bent one of those, well two of the springs were broken, so I've just turned them around again, so there's tension on all the brushes, they're all moving, should be enough to get us away from these cyclones until I can source a new one of these, it's so hot here, and uh, yeah, I'll put it back together now and see if it actually turns. You're amazing. They ever told you that? How clever you are? Nah. Well, I'm waiting to see if it starts. It might not work. Yet. <laughs> what you did when you were 15 years old? Nah. Hey? Oh. What was one of your first jobs? I was trying to find a trade and I did a bit of work experience in an um, auto electrician shop. So it's a fair few years ago, but I do remember cleaning these up. I only worked there for probably three, four weeks. You cleaned out side of it, isn't that came in handy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're 15. How many years ago was that? Oh, five, six <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Is that 20, 22 years ago? So we'll see. We'll see if that little bit of uh, work experience paid off. <laughs> so first clean out was a. Uh, Fail. So Lee's pulling everything apart now. Yeah, uh, she's pretty ordinary in there. Yes. More cleaning and making it shiny again, um, and then time to put it back together. 
Good. So Lee's cleaned out all of the starter motor now. A lot of parts there earlier on. And I haven't got any left over when I put it back together. That's always a good sign. <laughs> That's a good sign. Just watch your eyes out for some of that spins. Sounds terrible, but it's spinning. <sighs> I won't do it too many times because I don't think it'll have many starts. But I uh, wouldn't travel the world with anyone else. You're amazing. Now let's put it in super starts for real. Starts the motor. <laughs> so pretty much what happened? That water just got through the whole starter motor and just swirled until it the um, uh, whatever it is wouldn't even spin. So uh, hopefully it's going to get us out of trouble to go and get another one. Uh, oh, a stupid spot for a starter motor, hey babe? Uh, yes. So join us next time on Sailing Catalpa as we have some bad weather heading our way and move to another protected anchorage and see how we fix our starter motor issues. Thanks so much for watching. If you like our video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Cheers, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, it all comes all thanks to you all. to y'all